So I'm here today. The topics of cash flow, cost management. I think the whole agenda of today is driven around that. Change is what I'm going to focus on and what we can do to make a difference. I'm going to start the uh, presentation with a short video. And think about this video in terms of your own business and how you could relate to it. Betsy, dear. Yes, sir. Yes, please send Mr. Disney in. Mr. Stone Street. Mr. Disney, please come in. Welcome. Thank you. Have a seat, sir. So I've been looking over this mouse, this mouse idea that you have, uh, Mickey, I believe. Um, and uh, I think you have some good stuff here. So my first question for you is, how long did it take you to concept this character? Well, my wife and I were on the train from New York to Los Angeles. No, 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 sir. Not, not uh, on the train. I mean, I mean, actually, concept, work on it. I mean, I assumed you punched some time cards in. Uh, my wife can vouch for the time that I spent. I would say the first six hours was spent sketching the mouse. I wanted to make sure he looked more sympathetic, not so frightening. Right. That's why I, I made his teeth smaller, uh, put a little red vest on him. Okay. He really came to life. Yeah, okay, so a total of six hours, huh? Uh, that's correct, and then another five hours was spent uh, refining the drawing. Okay, so a total of 11 hours you spent working on this character. Well, yes, and then um, somewhere in Denver, I renamed the mouse from Mortimer to Mickey. Mickey Mouse sounded better. Uh, so how long did it take you to rename the character? Uh, four more hours, sir. So a total of 15 hours? Yes, and, and then about three or four more hours of uh, me just thinking about it. Thinking? <laughs> I'm not sure I want to fund you for your thinking, sir. But uh, here's what I'm prepared to do. Let's say a total of 17 hours for your time spent, and you're going rate of $5 per hour, I am prepared to write you a check for $85 today, sir. Mr. Stone Street, that sounds wonderful. wonderful. Thank you very much. Wonderful, sir. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself, sir. Wow. That's Mickey Mouse, sold for $85. With little regard for the perpetual value of that character. Unbelievable. Do you guys face that every day? Do you guys face the problem of looking at the labor costs and the time and materials as a function of, of determining your price for your clients? If that's your issue, then this is the same problem this guy has. I mean, I'd love the comment that was made in there. I don't want to pay you for your thinking. Can you imagine not wanting, wanting to be paid for your thinking? And that's really what happened here. Clearly, money was left on the table and it was sold way too short. I'm sure every time you go and have conversations with your clients, you feel the same way. When they're trying to benchmark you to a cost that you may incur rather than the value that you bring to their business, which is the key. Don't get me wrong, costs are important. You need to manage your costs. That's Accounting 101 or Business Management 101. You need to manage your labor costs. You need to make sure you're sourcing the best or the lowest material costs you can in the market. And you need to manage your overheads. So you need to do those. Without doing those, everything else doesn't work. So it, it does have value. However, the prices that you charge your valued clients should, should not be derived from labor and materials. Ask the question, what is the value of what I'm selling? And challenge your business model. Uh, the challenging of your business model, looking at a different way of selling. How often have you gone to a client, presented them a solution or a product, and said to them, it's not for sale? It's not for sale. I'm sure if you ever said that to them, two weeks later, they will actually want to know what it costs, and then you can price whatever you like. Because there is a wonder there. Why is it not for sale? Don't sell it to them. Sell, it, sell them a right to use it for a period of time. Break the convention. Break the convention of just selling based on your cost structure. Find the value. The value that the client will get eventually. Sorry, yeah, please. Can we go back? Yeah. Let me go back here. Sure.
Let's get to the end, and I think it'll become a little bit clearer. Okay. So what we're saying is that the pricing that you should charge to your client should not necessarily be based on the costs that you incur to develop that product. It should be based on the value it gives to the end client, the value it gives, gives them to develop their own business, okay? Because that's the value at the end of the day, okay? These are the three keys if I wanted to wrap up this, this uh, short session. You've got to manage your costs. This goes without saying. Secure value with the prices that you secure with your clients. But you've got to have those conversations with the CXOs, not with procurement. Who here is from procurement? Anyone? Any pro okay, one guy. Sorry to bring this on to you, but honestly, having the conversations with the procurement will end up just driving down your prices. You need to have those conversations with the CXOs in order, because they, un they understand the value of what you bring to the table, not the procurement guy who's trying to benchmark you to the lowest cost. So have those conversations with the right people. Finally, we heard it earlier with Gina, uh, disruption, it is real. This is a philosophy that the company I represent, TBWA RAD, uh, does cherish. It's in the heart of everything that we do. Basically looking at what we do and breaking a market convention. This is what disruption is all about. And it's really when you look at challenger brands and how they make their own space and how they grow um, at a very uh, strong, strong pace, a lot of it's driven by changing what they do, being disruptive in how they do it, uh, and approaching it in a totally different manner to what the industry has been used to. We've seen numerous examples of that over the years. Uh, thinking differently, if you recall, Apple is a good example. That's one of our clients, by the way. Um, they took the approach of thinking differently, and we know where they are today. We've seen a lot of newcomers, Uber, do that as well, thinking differently, taking a different approach. Uh, uh, Airbnb, these are just new brands, new challenger brands that have come into the market with a different approach uh, in order to generate value, generate growth, uh, and, and eventually profits and cash. So that's all I had for you guys this morning. Uh, feel free to reach out to me, as Gina mentioned. I hope there's a, uh, there's a takeaway out there for you. Certainly disruption, I feel strongly about that. It's not a buzzword. There's some value behind it. Think about it when it comes to your business. I'm sure there is something you can change and disrupt in order for you to secure some value in the market. Thank you very much.